So you're thinking about moving to Northeast Ohio and you're looking at the Solon area, we're gonna go over everything about what it's like to live here, the good and the bad, the schools, the jobs, the location, and the real estate here. And stick around for pro number four because we're gonna go over all the fun things to do in Solon. Pro number one, and this is one of the biggest reasons that people move into this area, and that is the Solon City School System. You can see here they have a really nice campus for the high school, the middle school, elementary school, and they actually have another elementary school just north of 422 Freeway in Solon also. Now, Solon schools are pretty consistently ranked around number 10 in all of Ohio. And I say around because it depends on which source you check online. Niche.com says that they're number one school in Ohio. And uh, Cleveland.com puts them at number seven in all of Ohio. Greatschools.com gives the high school a 10 out of 10 rating. But you get the idea, Solon school system is pretty consistently rated near the top of the list every year. And that's really what brings a lot of people to this area. Pro number two, and that is the jobs, the employment, being able to work and live in Solon is a big reason why people move here. So some of the biggest companies here are Nestle, Stouffer's, Swage Lock, Invent. Cleveland Clinic, of course, draws a ton of people to Northeast Ohio. They have a family health center here. And Cleveland Clinic main campus is really only about 40 minutes from downtown Solon. So if you have to work at the main campus, it's not too bad of a drive to get there. Now, there are also hundreds of other businesses in Solon, obviously, but one of the great things that Solon has is this really large industrial parkway over on the west side of Solon. And not only does that bring a lot of jobs into Solon, but it helps carry the tax burden of paying for a lot of these amenities that we're going to talk about a little bit later. So Solon taxes aren't really that high comparable to some other cities in Northeast Ohio on the east side. If you look at Cleveland Heights, they have like a 4% tax rate. Solon is only about 2.5%, which is higher than some other cities towards the east, but it's still pretty good. And that's because of these businesses and this industrial park right here. Now, pro number three of living in Solon, and that is the general location. This is great on a few different levels. First of all, you're only about 30 to 45 minutes from downtown Cleveland or Akron for city life, jobs, restaurants, Lake Erie, anything that you want in those directions. And Solon is also conveniently located right between Chagrin Falls and Hudson. You have shopping there, you have restaurants, they have these cute little towns that are very walkable. On top of that, if you love being outdoors, there are a ton of parks within 30 minutes of Solon. You could be to some of the best parks in Northeast Ohio. You have the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. This is thousands of acres. People come from all over the state to visit this park. You have uh, South Chagrin right next door. They have some great trails here, some waterfalls, uh, the Quarry Rock area. North Chagrin is also great with Squires Castle. And really, they have a whole emerald necklace that surrounds Cleveland. If you look that up, it's a park system that surrounds the outside of Cleveland, Ohio, and it's really easy access from Solon. Another great thing about the location of Solon is that it's right in the middle of a major highway, 422. That's a huge advantage if you're going to work in Cleveland or anywhere outside of Solon. You have really quick access here. If you look at somewhere like Aurora, Ohio, and I have a pros and cons video of living there as well, you should check that out. Uh, but the, one of the biggest cons of living in Aurora is that you don't have easy access to the freeway. So it takes you 15, 20 minutes just to get to a major highway. So Solon does have a huge advantage there. You have 422, you can jump right onto 480, 271, 71 up to Cleveland, uh, eight south down to Akron, or 271 south down to Columbus. Pro number four is all the amenities, all the things that Solon has to offer. But if you guys are seriously considering moving into this area, it's really important that you have a good agent that knows the area, the market, what's selling and what's not. Someone that can work for you and your goals and the lifestyle that you want. So if you're looking for an agent, I would love to help you guys. You can call, text or email me anytime or I can give you a great referral of someone who works in this area as well. Back to our regularly scheduled program. See what I did there? Pro, pro number four? Yeah. Uh, so pro number four is the amenities, everything that Solon has to offer, all the fun things like trash service. It doesn't sound like a huge deal until you live somewhere like Bainbridge where you're paying $60 to $100 a month uh, for trash pickup. Of course, you do pay for it in your taxes, but it's really nice that they include that service. You don't have an extra bill for your trash and recycling. But for the really fun stuff, Solon has a great community park and community center. Solon Community Park is located right off 91, just in the center of town. They have basketball courts, baseball diamonds, uh, tennis, pickleball, playgrounds. They have pavilions that you can rent, volleyball, sand volleyball courts. Now, the community center here is fantastic and it's surprisingly affordable for a Solon resident. If you were to look somewhere else like Sugar and Falls at joining a club like this, you'd probably be paying about $200 a month. They have a really nice facility here. They have an indoor pool, outdoor pools. Uh, they have a basketball court, indoor track. They have a rock climbing wall and a lot of fitness classes that you can choose from. Now, Solon also has a public golf course, the Grant Wood Golf Course, right off Aurora and Pettibone Road. And that's right across from the signature of Solon Development that has their own private golf course, which we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about real estate. They have a really nice course there. It's really affordable. It's definitely worth checking out if you're into playing golf and want to stay within the Solon area. 
Of course, Solon has a really nice bowling alley, a movie theater. I heard the escape room there is actually pretty good. I've never been to it. And for restaurants, a lot of people love the Chicago Deli. Almost everyone knows about this. It's been here forever. You have Swirl Wine Bar. 56 Kitchen has a really cool atmosphere. You've got Burntwood Tavern and Yours Truly, which are chain restaurants, but they're always good. Now for grocery stores within Solon, there's a lot of options. There's the Giant Eagle Market District, which is absolutely huge. This is probably one of the biggest grocery stores here. Uh, it's really laid out. They have a cafe in there. They have catering. They have pre-made meals and uh, sushi. They have, just have everything in there. If you're looking for more budget options, of course, there is the Aldi's and the Marks in town here as well, and those are really popular. And about five minutes away towards the Aurora area, you have a Walmart, a Home Depot, Target, PetSmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, a lot of options over there. So within 10 minutes, you have a ton of shopping, grocery stores uh, around Solon. So those are the pros. Let's talk about the cons, why people don't like Solon, why a couple of my friends are moving out of the area. So con number one, and that is the cost of living specifically related to real estate. Now, yes, the taxes are a little bit more affordable than uh, Shaker Heights, but they're still kind of high, 2.5% of your property value. If you look at somewhere like Geauga County over to the east, Aurora, Twinsburg, those property taxes are gonna be under 2%, so they are a little bit cheaper. And Solon also has a regional income tax, the RITA tax, which is 2% of your total income. So that's always something to consider as well. Now, if you're gonna buying a house here, real estate can get pretty expensive and so on. There is a huge range to choose from, which is really nice. But if you look at the state average price per house, it's about $200,000. And if you go into Solon, you're going to be paying at least $380,000 to $400,000 on average uh, if you're looking at buying a house in Solon. Now, that's not to say there aren't properties that are cheaper than that. Some of the neighborhoods we'll talk about a little bit later. I'll show you some of those. Uh, but Solon is generally a lot more expensive for the real estate than surrounding areas. Now, con number two, this is a big one for a lot of people. And this is the reason that a couple of my friends are leaving Solon. Solon is not really a walkable city. There's really no downtown area and everything's kind of spread out. So if you're looking at going to a restaurant or somewhere fun, you're gonna have to get in your car and drive. And a lot of people don't like that. They want that downtown experience. Like you have over in Chagrin Falls or Hudson or the ever popular uh, Lakewood over on the west side city, Ohio City, Tremont, areas like that that have just this central location of restaurants, bars, shopping, all in one place. And because of that, Solon's not really known for its downtown nightlife kind of vibe. So if you're looking for that, you're probably gonna have to go to downtown Cleveland or one of the surrounding cities. Con number three, and that is the traffic. Honestly, this really isn't that bad, but as soon as you get off the freeway, 422, that off-ramp right there going on to 91 can get really backed up. It's kind of a bottleneck there, especially with that light. I probably sat there five to 10 minutes right as rush hour traffic was coming through just to get through that first light to downtown Solon. Now, it's also something you should think about if you're looking at living in the southern half of Solon below 422. And one of the big reasons is that there is a lot of traffic on the south side. Not only do you have to go through a lot of different lights, but you also have that school zone there. So if you're living below the school, to get to work in the morning, you're gonna have to go through the school zone and a bunch of lights just to get to 422, the freeway. If you're living on the north side, you don't have that school zone and you don't have as many lights. So it's a little bit more convenient if you're working out of town. Con number four, and that is the weather. You're probably gonna hear this in a lot of my pros and cons videos for Northeast Ohio, but Solon sits within the snow belt. So you do get a little bit more snow or a lot more snow sometimes than if you're looking at like Akron or even Hudson and Twinsburg. And I love snow, but it does cause accidents in the winter. It slows down traffic and it clogs up your driveway and your car. So having an attached car garage is really nice in Northeast Ohio. Unfortunately, a lot of houses in Solon have attached car garages, uh, but you may wanna consider something like a snow plowing service or a snow blower to clear your driveway off. Sometimes snow plowing services can be unreliable, so a lot of people have their own snow blowers here. Now that we've gone over some of the pros and cons, let's talk about some of the neighborhoods here, the more frequent, more popular neighborhoods in the Solon area, like the ABC streets. So ABC streets are named after the letters of the alphabet, Arbordale, uh, Brooklyn, Copley, Dunedin, you get the idea. So the reason this is popular is because it's probably the most affordable neighborhood within Solon. The houses here start around $200,000 and go up to about $300,000. Rarely do I see a house in here that's over $300,000. Most of the houses here are built in the 60s. A lot of them are split level. Some of them are more outdated. If you get one of the cheaper houses, it's probably gonna be outdated, but they're really nice. It's a nice quiet neighborhood, and a lot of my clients and friends live in this area. A little bit further south in Solon is the Liberty Hill neighborhood. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive because the houses are built a little bit later towards the 80s, 
and they are a little bit bigger. Some of them run at 300 to $400,000, even up to 450, $500,000 in here. There's a lot of options. You have single family, you have condos, you have apartments, Liberty Hill apartments here. The condos are about $200,000 and the HOA fees around here are about $200 a month, which is pretty reasonable. Now, if we jump over to the preserve, this is over by the middle school across the street, still in the southern half of Solon. And the houses in here are a little bit larger and newer and of course more expensive. The house in here is gonna run you probably about four to six hundred thousand dollars. The HOAs are usually around two hundred dollars uh, a month here, but it's a really nice quiet neighborhood and it's very close to the middle school. If you've looked into Solon all you've probably heard of the signature of Solon neighborhood and the golf course, their own private golf course that they have there. There's two phases to this development. Phase one has the golf course. A lot of the houses in here are built in the 2000s. They're about 600 to a million dollars. Occasionally you can find one for 600. The majority of them are probably around $800,000. They're a lot bigger, they're a lot newer. Some of the lots in here are fairly decent size. And if you go over to the second phase, the lots over there get a little bit bigger. Uh, the houses in there range about six to $800,000 also, but they have on the Southern half, they have some really expensive $1.5, $2 million houses in there on an acre and a half lots. Now right across the street from the signature of Solon is the Thornberry neighborhood, and this is really popular also. This is one of the newest neighborhoods in Solon. These were built in the 2010s, 2014, around that time. A lot of the houses in here are 3,000, 4,000 square feet. They have a price tag of about 600,000 up to a million. So it is a little bit more of an expensive neighborhood, and the HOA runs about three, four hundred dollars a month. So heading up to the north half of Solon, this is a little bit lighter traffic up here. Like I said, they don't have so many stoplights and you don't have that school zone to go through if you're looking at getting into the freeway. Some of the neighborhoods I'm in quite often are this Ledge Hill Springside neighborhood. This isn't really one HOA, but they have houses in here for three to 400,000. And it seems like I'm always showing houses within these streets. And then of course, there are a couple of neighborhoods north of this also that have more expensive houses, 600 to a million, as you get closer to Moreland Hills. So those are some of the real estate options in Seoul and the pros, the cons, the good and the bad about living in this area. But if you guys are thinking about moving here, give me a call, text, or email anytime. I would love to hear from you. And of course, if you got any value out of this video, consider subscribing because we're gonna have a lot more videos coming out. So thanks again for watching and I will see you guys around Northeast Ohio.